welcome back to the Bishop Book Club and today we're talking about book 7 in Augustine's Confessions. So it's quite a philosophical book. He talked more about um, who God is, the substance of God as he calls it, and the origins of evil. So Augustine really is asking himself some deep questions and trying to figure out who is God, who is the God the Christians talk about. And he's, try he's been trying to think of God as the supreme being over everything. Um, trying to see, well, is God limited to like outside the earth? Or you know, does it go beyond that? Is he involved at all in the earth? And he's sort of all over the place trying to figure out, you know, what he wants to put a limit on who God is and try and get in his head what exactly God is to define it. Because obviously being a deep thinker, he wants to know exactly who he is so that he can make sense of it all. And he really tries to use one of his friends, I think it's um, Nebrubius' argument about God. Nebrubius believed in the Manichae's fraud and about the limits of God. And Augustine's trying to say, well, how can I use this to say, is this who God is and who God isn't? And basically the Manichae's were saying that there was some sort of um, corruption going on. And they're saying, well, there was this battle um, between God and what they're saying is, if there was imaginary powers and they challenged God to a battle, what effect would it have? And Augustine's like, well, if they did, what would happen? He's like, well, if, they, if the Manichaeans were to say, well, you know, God would be corrupted in this battle, then that can't be right. But then if they're saying that nothing would happen, well, that kind of goes against the Manichaeans for saying that, um, you know, the soul is damned because they have this whole idea if I'm right, it's a whole idea of where it's all got corrupted and part of it's come off and then that's what's caused the man's soul to be damned and corrupted. But if God's not corrupted, then how can that happen? So he's sort of playing this whole long, for a few pages, he goes into this long spiel of how is this possible? How is it not possible? So he's trying to sort of, I guess, take himself away from what he used to, thought, used to think to see, well, what does he think now? Then he moves into, well, why is there evil in the world? Where does it come from? Because if God isn't this corruptible being, then surely he made everything good. But if there's evil, does that mean that the God that the Christians believe in, who's omnipotent, left a wee bit not good? And that's what caused evil? So I guess the same thing as everybody today thinks, is why is there such thing as evil in the world? Where does it come from? Is it God or does God not stop it? So Augustine, all those centuries ago, is asking exactly the same questions. I think the reason mostly, I think that he's asking them, is because obviously he spent all that time with the Banachies, uh, with them asking these questions and they had an idea of where evil came from he's trying to dispel the belief that was common at that time for people who supported them saying oh, it's God's fault and he's trying to say well is it God or is there another reason for the origin of evil and he actually talks about another one of his friends I think it's Firminius or Firminius yeah and he says he's trying to look basically at God's power as well and his friend was all caught up in astrology and he's trying to see is astrology can it predict things and he uses this argument with his friend and his friend say, says to him well can you use star charts can you predict the future based on star charts and his friend says well what if there's twins born on the same day and things don't work out the same for both of them does that mean there's something wrong with the star chart or what is it and it's I think for Augustine is the final nail in the coffin for astrology because if we remember in the earlier books he was caught up in the Manichae's fraud, astrology, basically anything that he thought was a learned way of coming to know the wisdom and truth and that's sort of the final nail in the coffin for him. He starts to really think well it, there's no explanation there for why these people have turned out differently, why the circumstances of life have turned out differently. So he's gradually getting closer to the truth and gradually getting closer to accepting Christianity for what it is. He's realizing that all the different truths, I guess, or wisdoms out there just really aren't pleasing him. Um, he says at this time that God actually aids and befriends him, which is pretty cool, because before that he was you know, sort of just shouting out for God, but not really knowing that God was really in his life, not recognizing him. If you remember from book six, where he's talking about how he believes his friend, God used him to bring his friend closer to him, Alpheus, but he didn't recognise it then, it's only later in life he realised God was working through him. So he tells us a lot about creation as well, and he praises God for creation. Obviously this is a later stage, he's writing back all this praise for God's creation. Um, 
yeah, he tells us a lot about what he does believe, what he's re what he's found out from scriptures that you know Christ ate, Christ slept, Christ walked. But at this stage, he tells us that he actually just thought Christ was the perfect man. You know, not so much that Christ was God or that Christ was human and divine. It was more that he says, well, Christ was very much the perfect man. And because of that, you know, he's saying he's perfect because he's got the divine share of wisdom. So he's really starting to try and figure out, well, who is Jesus? And that's a question that he delves into quite a bit. Um, but he really did, he does say quite honestly, he really thought that Christ was no more than the perfect man. He did say in book seven that all the time that he spent in his previous books talking about um, Plato, he does say that he's glad he came across all those books at an earlier stage because they led him to where he came to. But he says that he would have been worried if after he started to meet with Ambrose and after he started to understand the scriptures, then he went to find the Plato books because he says, you know, the Platonist literature might have confused him and it might have actually sent him on the wrong journey. But he said that instead, he believes it was God's will for him to find them earlier, to bring him towards understanding Christianity more because it made him ask all the right questions. And a lovely thing he says towards the end of the book seven is the influence St. Paul had on him in his life. He says he read the epistles and it really helped him discover truth and they really set his heart trembling. 